Hello and welcome everybody to a new video. So in this video, we are going to talk about this little uh, tensegrity model that I made. Um, so I made this model just as kind of a demonstration to myself about how this stuff works. Um, I have a plan to build like a, uh, a bigger table, maybe made out of wood or something like that, um, like a coffee table or like a side table type thing. Um, but I needed to make sure that my mental model of exactly how this worked was correct. Um, turns out it is, as you can see here, I made this little guy and it works uh, pretty well. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk about this, how I made this model, the design and stuff like that. And yeah, let's, let's just get into it then. So um, we'll start off looking at the CAD. So this is basically the entire thing. <laughs> so it's one 3D printed part that uh, you print twice and that uh, makes up the whole structure. Then the whole structure, as you can see here, is connected by hooks and wires. And that's pretty much it. The, uh, the tension in the wires is what holds the whole thing up. So uh, I should say a tensegrity structure is basically a self-supporting structure that is entirely held together by the tension in the wires that it's made up of. So these wires are flexible. Um, they can't hold anything uh, in compression, but when you have tension in the whole thing, it holds itself together. Um, so there's like a hanging sort of tension and then there's support tension in these side wires uh, and that holds the whole thing together, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I designed this guy up in CAD, printed it out, assembled it just really as a test for my mental model. Um, but yeah, as I said, this is the base structure. It's very, very simple. Um, it's just one part. Uh, it's got a flat disc at the bottom uh, with some holes punched in it. And then it has this uh, column that comes out with another uh, through hole uh, in, 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 in there. So I designed one. Uh, I'll see here, I'll show you the second one. So if I duplicated it and just flip it around, this is how the whole thing goes together. Um, you notice there's a big gap here in the middle and that's because I was measuring it off of these little hooks that I had, you can see there, and they're about uh, 13 millimeters or so, um, uh, 13 millimeters or so in diameter. So there's like this offset where you can imagine the hooks will be sticking out here, a hook will be sticking out here, and then there's like a straight line down the middle. Um, right around the, the, the very center axis of the whole thing. So from there then, we assemble it together with little more little eyelets that go through here and wires that connect those together. Um, you might be wondering, so in this case, we only have three, uh, as you can see there, and that's all you need. You don't need any more than that. So why do I have six holes? And uh, the reason why I have six holes is because I originally designed the first part with just three holes. Uh, and then I realized that when you rotate this and flip it upside down, those holes wouldn't line up anymore. So to make it just so that it's literally one the one part that you just have to print twice, uh, I punched six holes in it. Um, so you can see here that when it's upside down, you're actually, their opposite holes are lining up. So uh, the hole here is actually this hole is what it corresponds to when you flip it upside down. Uh, and then the same with the... Uh, with all the other radial ones. So it's very simple. It's just a, a six hole pattern, 60 degrees separated. Yeah, that's that really. Um, so yeah, that's kind of as complicated as it gets. Uh, it's not a very uh, difficult thing to understand. It wasn't terribly hard to design either. Um, there's kind of an elegance to it. I quite like this design. Now, like when you think about tensegrity designs, they can be kind of wild, crazy. This is about as simple as it can get. Uh, and this also happens to be a very popular design for tables, which is why I chose this one to be my little desk model that I was going to create for it. Um, so yeah, with that said, uh, let's have a look at some of the assembly and some of the little bits around I've put together the wires and stuff like that. Um, yeah, let's have a look at that. And Okay, so this is just a little bit of background on some of the other materials that are involved. Obviously, I have my two 3D printed parts and they need to get connected together. So to do that, I'm using this really small fine gauge wire. Um, I don't know what other people call it. I would always call this stuff picture wire, as in it's a kind of wire that you use to hang uh, pictures on your wall. Um, I picked it for this because it's very, very light. 
uh, very thin gauge, but it's also extremely strong. So this model isn't going to be under a huge amount of tension, but I thought it would just look kind of cool, especially if I was able to get some crimps to hold it all together. So that brings me to these little uh, aluminium crimps. Very simple, just kind of an oblong uh, aluminium tube. It's very, very soft. It's actually made for a slightly thicker um, gauge wire than this, but it works pretty much fine for this. Literally, all you need to do is use a little crimping tool to just squeeze down on it. Uh, I'm using a crimping tool here, but you could actually just use any normal pliers as long as you can just get enough of a, a good clamping action on it. Crimping tool does have an advantage that the jaws are uh, quite parallel and they close up evenly, so you get a nice even crimp the whole way across. Um, but yeah, you could use anything to do this really. This is just a sample of uh, what you can do with that. So you see here, I've got my length of wire uh, kind of fold it back on itself. I'll show this in detail later on, but this is kind of the final product you can get out of it. Um, crimp down on your aluminium crimp and you have this nice little length of wire with two loops on the end of it, which will be going through our hooks uh, in the final version. And of course, then we've got our little hooks. Um, I said earlier on, these are 13 millimeter or so in diameter. They're actually a little bit overkill uh, for this. Uh, they don't really need to be this big. Uh, just so happened to be the ones that I bought that had uh, like an M3 screw because I had a bunch of M3 nuts <laughs> lying around that I'd be able to fix it together with. Uh, but you could use the smaller ones actually in, in proportion to the model. It would look a bit better if they were slightly smaller, but it nah, doesn't really matter. Again, it was only a test. Uh, and yeah, the proportion's not too bad really, but they'd look nicer if they were a little smaller. This is just the assembly of like a single loop of what uh, goes together in the hooks. Um, very simple, take a little length of wire, um, sort of measure off as much of it as you need. I'm using uh, wire strippers here that has a little uh, snippers built onto it, clips st straight through the very thin gauge wire, no problem. Um, from then there, you sort of need to thread the little uh, crimp over the end of the wire and then bend it back on itself, feed it back through the crimp, uh, ensuring that you've got your hook placed around it already. Um, and then very simply, just have to line it up, get the tension kind of just right, get it set up just the way you want it to, and then clamp it in your crimper. And that's it. Um, it forms a very, very strong um, grab. So the soft aluminium squishes really nicely against the steel wire. And yeah, makes a very positive connection, quite strong. Um, conveniently, with these little hooks as well, there's a little gap uh, at the base of them. So if you've crimped one on uh, and you realize that you've made it the wrong length, you can just pop it off. Um, you'll see, well, so the biggest kind of part of this uh, for me was trying to get the length of all the wires to be correct, because once you've made one of these, uh, they you can't change the length of the wire really. So you have to basically just pull them out uh, and remake them. I had to do that once or twice just to get these right. Slight flaw with this model design, but again, just the model didn't really matter too much. I just wanted to uh, get it working. Um, so remaking one or two wires wasn't the end of the world. On to our final assembly now. This process, uh, it's pretty easy. It's a little bit fiddly is the only thing with it. Um, just making, as, as you are putting it together, it's really, really unwieldy until you start to get the final tension on all the wires. So you'll notice that uh, as I assemble it, it's kind of flopping all over the place. And then as I get more of the three support wires in, it gets like, kind of gains more structure. And then as the tension, uh, as I kind of clamp down and increase the tension on each of those wires, the whole thing really starts to gain its rigidity and you'll really see it start to come together. It's quite fascinating to do it. Um, like conceptually, I sort of understood how, um, how this works, but it's really a different sense when you actually start to tension down the cables yourself and you start to feel it come together. It gives you this whole other sense about what's going on and uh, you know what the forces involved are. It's also really satisfying and you like as you push down on one side or the other of it as it's in your hands you'll see one cable slacken a little bit and you can feel the tension in the other cables. It's really quite satisfying. It's a uh, it's, it's it's pretty cool if you actually get to play with it. Uh, I would urge anyone who hasn't played around with this if you're kind of interested in these sort of mechanical models to to put one together and just just play with it. It's currently been sitting on my desk for the last while now since I made it and yeah, it's just a really satisfying object to handle and to kind of play with. So uh, this is pretty much it. This is a nice short video, just a quick overview of this little thing. I thought it was kind of just a curious little thing that I was working on. Worked out quite well, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, 
as a final test for the strength of this thing, uh, I stuck my uh, full water bottle on it. So the 800 ml bottle with stainless steel bottle weighs a little bit under a kilo and it held it no problem. So that's pretty cool. Um, uh, I was a little bit worried that the center support columns are just going to shear and well, they might just shear eventually. But in any case, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Don't really have anything else to say about this. It was a simple project. It worked off work basically straight away, which is a rare treat for me. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, this is going to be a good learning experience for me to go on and make a bigger, better version of this, like an actual table or something like that. And yeah, so I think I'm going to leave that here for this one, guys. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.